say good morning. Good morning. Uh, if you want to look in your bulletin, we'll go over some of the upcoming events. And so Wednesday, there'll be no service. So I'm sure that's a big one for everybody. November 23rd, December the 10th and 11th, there will be a drive through a nativity scene. If you'd like to be in the nativity program, please uh, add your name to the sign-in sheet in the vestibule. And then it says holiday food basket list. If you know someone that needs a basket or anything, please uh, let someone know and sign up. Is there anything else on that? And then Operation Christmas Child, and it says we packed 233 shoe boxes. So is there any announcements I didn't cover or anything anybody wants to add? Uh, is there any birthdays? forgot to mention when I opened up, I'd like to welcome any visitors and any visitors that we had in the past. I'd like to welcome you, Everett. Glad to see you all here. Uh, I have a card up here to read, or I was told to read, and it's a thank you note. Just wanted to say thanks for everybody praying for us on all the shipping on the 233 boxes. And so it came from of various people. The Lord works wonders through wonderful people like you. Uh, is there any prayer request? I still, I'd like to say remember Corey and his family. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I need you to attend a congregation to pray for me and my and uh, because I just found out I'm going through a nasty divorce, so any other requests? I remember Roy Wright, he's been in rehab, but he's going to be <coughs> home tomorrow to church and go to his plant. So we need to get Roy up. <coughs> remember Jane Janeway, she had some surgery tomorrow. Oh. Can you pray for Papa Paul Collins, who's had a heart surgery tomorrow? I, I didn't catch him. Paul Collins? He's had a car surgery tomorrow. Remember a lady named Carol? She had a stroke and she had a brain bleed and she's not doing well. Are there any other smokers in the quest? Cheryl, will you go with some prayer? Our dear most kind lady here with Father, we thank you, Lord, today for the opportunity before us. We thank you for your mercy, grace, and your long suffering toward us, God. And help us as we approach uh, this Thanksgiving Day, Lord, that we'd be ever thankful for all the blessings of this life. So many things that we take for granted here in America. And we thank you for blessing America, God. But help us to do our parts as Christians, God, that we might spread the good news, that we might tell people about Jesus Christ and what he's done for us, that he went to the cross and died for our sins, God, and he arose that third and pointed day. And through that resurrection, we can have life and have it more abundantly. And we pray for those today that are lost, God, those that need in a very special way. We pray that you give them another opportunity to be saved before it's too late. And when we come to thee today, Lord, we want to thank you for those that came before that uh, have lit the path for us, God, that we know uh, which way to go and who to trust in, and that's to trust in thee, God. And we thank you for our ancestors and the sacrifices they made along this way for uh, us to live in a land like we do, God. And we pray for those today, Lord, that have lost loved ones. We uplift them to you. Those that are sick today and may be sick unto death, God, we pray for them and the caregivers 
that you would uh, grant them peace, God, and if it could be in thy divine will, we pray for thy healing power to overshadow them and heal those bodies from disease, God. And we pray for those uh, today, Lord, that uh, stand in need, the prayer requests that have been made, whatever they might be, that you would answer them according to your will. Once again, we thank you that we live in America. We thank you that we've been saved, God, and we thank you for all the good things of this life. In thy name we pray, and amen. Let's sing number 640 in the White Book. sing Give Thanks, or it should be up on the screen. Let's all stand and sing 644 in the White Book. <coughs>
sitting there thinking about uh, a song that says, It's me again, Lord. Down on my knees and pray. Lord made us a promise that when we bowed before him, that he would meet us, did he? I also thought about the song, Count Your Blessings. Now, I, I wouldn't have time, would you? With what time I've got left, I would not have time to count the blessings because as April sing, we've all been blessed uh, way and beyond what we deserve to be blessed. And you might think, well, I desire, and I, I deserve the blessings from God. No, I don't think so. Because of the life that we live in the flesh, we fail and we come short. Every day, as we fail God and come short of the glory of God and uh, the promise of God, I think a lot of times of, uh, the question was asked uh, at a church, do you think we are saints? Do you think we're saints this morning? Think for a minute now. There is a part of us that is. There is a part that is not. But when God saved us, I believe that Jesus Christ came as the Son of God. I believe that God anointed him when he did come to be that perfect person in the world. And I believe that in the flesh. Perfect. No sin. But followed the will of the Father the leadership of, uh, of the word that God spoke to him. I truly believe that God speaks to you and I, and I believe that he spoke to the Son day by day, that he led him and he directed him, and he said, I must be about my Father's business. I am of him and he is of me. And he directs me and he leads me and I follow him. But when he saved you and I, he made us a promise of one thing. He said, I have made you to become the sons of God. So we are uh, this morning, if we're saved by his grace, if we've had the blood applied, we are his children he speaks to us, he leads us, he directs us if we will follow. That's our choice. That's our choice. Whether we follow God or reject God. Whether we're on God's side or whether we're on Satan's side. We can't be both. He said, I will not have you to be lukewarm. What's that mean? following one thing one day and something else the next is the way I look at it. We follow God on Sunday, whatever pleases us on Monday. So that's not the will of God. He said, I will reject you. I will chastise you. I will let you know that I am your father. My father used to let me know that he was my father. He was the one in authority when I was at home. And my mother was worse than he was. But we need that direction. I do not hold that against them. Why? Because that's the leadership of love, compassion, concern, wanting you to be a person that God would be pleased with, that God would be happy with. In the scripture in Hebrews this morning, I want to read a couple of verses. 
But I hope and trust and pray that God will uh, direct our hearts because I uh, have not the ability nor the knowledge nor the understanding to tell you what God wants in your life. That's between you and God. That's between me and God. Judge not. Judge not that you be not judged. So I've always said, if I point my finger at Bill Cox, there's three coming this way. So, you know, uh, we need to uh, be led by the Spirit, directed by the Spirit. And I want you to pray this morning that the Holy Spirit will come, that the Holy Spirit will fill our hearts, uh, that we'll be lifted up, uh, and that we'll give praise to God and thank God for the opportunity to hear uh, His Word, uh, that we uh, will give God thanks that He has given us uh, the privilege and opportunity to gather at his house with the health and strength uh, to follow uh, and to worship God now, this morning. We don't come to uh, serve God this morning. We come to worship God uh, and to lift him up. Tomorrow we need to go out and serve God. Uh, we need to go out tomorrow to try to do the will of God. In the first uh, verse of the 12th chapter of Hebrews, I want to read a couple of verses here, and it says, Wherefore sin we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and sin uh, which doeth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, uh, who for... Uh, the joy that was set before him endured the cross despite the shame uh, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Wonderful uh, words that Paul uh, spoke to the people that he was telling them uh, how easy it is for uh, people to uh, be led by the wrong thing. Uh, for people that uh, do not uh, stay close to God. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but I find myself, people say, uh, well, you're a minister of the gospel. Yes, uh, and I'm a sinner uh, saved by the grace of God. That's all that I am. So there's so many times that the thoughts in my mind uh, and, and the acts in this fleshly uh, body that God is not pleased with, God's not happy with, but... Uh, uh, there are things also that people put in their lives and people put uh, uh, before God that they'd rather uh, uh, be led by and follow after than, uh, uh, than the leadership of the Spirit of God and the power of God. So we let those things uh, come before us and God. So that's why Paul said, uh, lay aside those things that weight you down, those things that uh, are not pleasing to God, the sin that is in our lives. You need to lay it aside uh, and follow uh, uh, the Spirit of God. You don't need to be following those things. Why did they have a problem uh, following those things? The Scripture goes on to say that they had this problem because they had not uh, uh, rejected the sin that was in their life and they had not received the blood. So therefore, uh, it's very easy for them to follow the things that God was not pleased with. If you have uh, not God in your life and you have not accepted the Lord, uh, uh, then it's very easily to follow uh, uh, the things that are out there in the world that uh, looks good to you. I've seen a lot of things when I was growing up uh, uh, that looked a lot better to me than church did. I, I saw things that I'd rather be doing uh, than what God said, here's what you ought to be doing. I was saved when I was uh, about 13, and I 
uh, 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 received God, but there was a period of time in my life that I uh, uh, laid that aside, and I did the things that was pleasing to me, and I did the things that I wanted to do. I did the things uh, that other people uh, were doing, and people uh, will say to you that peer pressure caused you should do this or do that, and I told a friend of mine, he kept talking about uh, peer pressure of how that young people followed all these things. I said, uh, peer pressure didn't cause me to do things. I, I did things because I wanted to do things. It was not because somebody else uh, was doing them, but it was because I wanted to join with someone else doing those things. So therefore, uh, God was not pleased. What did God say uh, uh, when he's not pleased with you? He said, I don't want you to faint in the way because I rebuke you uh, because I'm going to rebuke you when you're out of my will and you do the things that are not pleasing to me. What did he do to Jonah uh, when Jonah uh, refused to go uh, uh, to Nineveh, but uh, uh, he said, decided he's going to go down to Tarshish instead when God spoke to him so he didn't follow God. What happened to him? Uh, he got cast overboard uh, and therefore he was swallowed by a great fish. Now, uh, uh, people will call it a whale and I've heard discussions about that. The Bible don't say anything about a whale but I consider a great fish of being a whale. Uh, uh, no matter what kind it is, if it's great, it's a whale. Uh, uh, so uh, it, regardless of how you look at that, it's big enough to swallow a man. Uh, uh, so you consider that. If you go over to North Lake and you look out and there's a, a fish out there big enough to swallow you, uh, uh, you're not going to jump out on top of it that, uh, if you've got any mind. Uh, uh, but to think about that, that God... Uh, uh, caused him to recognize the point was that God wanted him to know I am in control. I have asked you and I pleaded with you and you've rejected. So therefore, uh, I'm going to rebuke you. So therefore, he cast him or he was cast overboard uh, and the fish swallowed him and it took him uh, three days to decide what he wanted to do. Uh, he decided probably it was better uh, uh, to be on the sure that it was to be depths in the, uh, deep in the sea uh, uh, so that, well, that's what we got to decide in our lives do we want to be on God's side or do we want to be on Satan's side do we want to be happy and do we want to be pleased do we want to have joy or do we want to have discomfort that's what we are looking at we're either uh, God's people or we're not we're either on God's side you can't choose uh, uh, I'm going to love this one but I'm not going to love that one. I'm going to talk to this one, but I'm not going to talk to that one. What if God had been that way? Uh, what if God had said, Ray, I'm not going to deal with you uh, uh, because I don't like you. I don't like your ways. I'm not going to fool with you, uh, but I'm going to love this person. God was not that way. God loved uh, uh, enough that he gave his son that each and every one of us could have the opportunity to have salvation in our lives what God has given us. Joy. Joy is why Christ said, uh, the scripture said, because of the joy uh, uh, that he had and the feeling that, it, what is joy? It's the feeling that is within. Uh, Jesus Christ had a joy uh, in knowing I'm going to be able to do something that is going to save uh, many people from a hell. I'm going to be able to do something that's going to give an opportunity uh, and I'm going to give my life and shed my blood uh, that people can receive of that and have the joy that I have in giving. We don't consider that a lot of times. We don't look at that. I heard somebody say uh, uh, not too long ago, matter of fact, just a few days ago, uh, if God, if Jesus Christ had had uh, an AK-47, he would not have had to go to the cross. I'm glad he didn't have one because if he didn't go to the cross, you and I would not have salvation. Amen. Think about that. He didn't reject. He joyfully came and gave his life, choosing this and choosing that being on this side or this side. I hear that so much. You're either on this side or you're on this side. Listen, you better be in the middle. You better be in the middle. That's where Jesus was. 
He was not on the side of the thief and the other person, uh, but he was in the middle. And he looked. I had a lady, and I didn't know this until after the service was over, uh, that she told me she had a problem. I was wondering. She had had a, a son that got killed uh, crossing the road, and he got ran over by a tractor and trailer and uh, lost his life, and she was uh, uh, concerned about where he was, uh, where he was at. God gave me a message at that church uh, uh, that I preached there, uh, not knowing what was needed, but I preached there uh, that where God is so... Uh, am I where God is Jesus Christ said where I am there you may be also what did he say to the thief on the cross uh, he said today thou shall be with me in paradise we have a lot of discussions whether we're going to heaven whether we're going to go uh, into paradise whether we're going to wait so long or whatever uh, regardless of what it is Jesus Christ is going to be there remember that because yes. he said where I am there you shall be. She came to me after church and she said, I thank you. Don't thank me, thank God that I recognized that my son was saved and born again and knew God, so therefore he's with Jesus. I don't have to worry where he's here or there. Listen, absent from the body. Now, this is the word of God, not my words, but Paul said, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Where are we going? Back to the Father. The soul that he breathed into man, that spirit that we have, that soul that he breathed into us that came from him, will go back to him. If we know him. If we know him. He said, you must know me. Jesus said, I am the door. You must come by me. No other way. Jonah was a person that got a second chance. You mean he got another chance? Yes. You look in the scripture, the scripture said, and the word of God came to me the second time. The second time. and said, you need to go. You need to go. Because I have a people, thousands of people. We have thousands of people. He said, I've got people in this city that don't know their right hand from their left. In other words, they don't have a lot of knowledge, and they need some guidance. They need some understanding. They need some teaching. And I need you to go and do that. So he finally... After the second chance, followed God. Preach the word. Preach the word to the people. God said, I'm going to give you 40 days. And if they don't repent, then I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to destroy them because I've given this opportunity. God does not. The scripture says, my spirit will not always strive with man. It will not always strive. There's going to come a time that's going to be the last opportunity. There's going to come a time that this will be the last chance. And after that, the scripture said, where the tree falleth, so shall it lie. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front, and I believe this with all my heart, that when you die, it is finished. It's done. I've had people, would you pray? I want you to pray at funerals, especially. They'd say, I want you to pray for them that they that they go to heaven. Listen, once they're laid in that casket, it's well, they don't have to go that far. Once they breathe that last breath, it's too late for me to pray. It's too late for you to pray. Time is finished over it's done no opportunity no way but the opportunity was given the time came the time was up it was over 
the day had arrived, what Jonah do? I want you to think about this now. Here was a man that had preached, that had uh, uh, talked to a great city, had prophesied to them, and they turned to God. But what did Jonah want to see? If you really read that scripture and looked at that scripture of what Jonah really wanted to see, he wanted to see judgment, didn't he? Hey, I've spent three days in the belly of a fish, and I want to see God have justice. You said you was going to destroy him. Are you going to repent, Lord, and not do what you said you was going to do? Yes, because these people have repented. From the smallest to the greatest have repented. And he went up on the hill where he could oversee the city, I want to see what God's going to do here. I want to see this. Went up there and built him a little shed and sat down in the shade of it. God blessed him, caused a gourd to grow up, to give him shade. Remember, remember, God knew his heart. God knew his heart. What did he do? He said, Jonah, does it do you well to anger? Does it do you well to anger? Have you ever been this mad? Have you ever been this mad, church? I'm so mad, I, I wish I'd just die. It'd be better for me to just go ahead and die than to live. I'm so mad. I'm so angry. That's what he told the Lord, wasn't it? He said, does it do you well to anger? Yes. Be better for me to just die than to live. But God gave him that gourd to shade him. God prepared a worm overnight that bit that gourd that it withered away. And then the sun rose. The sun came up. The hot wind started blowing. He started to be miserable started to be miserable and he asked him again does it do you well to anger he still replied be better for me to die got so hot and disappointed angry the heat that beat up on him that he fainted Scripture here in this scripture says, don't faint in the way. What's he saying? Don't, don't just lay down and give up, but go forward. Because if I love you, I'm going to chastise you. I'm going to tell you that right up front. If I love you, I'm going to chastise you. I'm going to rebuke you. When you do things I'm not pleased with. Now a lot of people take that chastisement and they turn to God. They turn to God. Some people take that chastisement and they leave home. They leave home. I've known people that the parents have corrected chastised them because they loved them and they've left home people leave God just the same he spoke to us about the prodigal son of how well he had it oh you've got everything you need but I want something different what do you do Father, give me my portion so I can go live my life. So I can go do the things that I want to do. What happened? The father divided and the son left. Shortly after, he wasted everything he had. Just passed it out, gave it away, just wondered what he had. Then, then, 
is just like you and I so many times when we leave God and we're not staying in touch with God, we begin to be in want. Don't we? we begin to be in want. Who do we turn to? God. We recognized if we're saved by the grace of God and a child of God, we recognize where our help comes from. So he began to be in want. And he sat down there. And I want you to think about this. He sat down there and thought, all of this that I had, all of this that I uh, uh, had the opportunity to receive at home, I've wasted it. All of this time that I could have been, whoever we are, serving God, I've let it slip by. Something that we can't go back and redo and make up. The opportunity that we have to speak to the lost. The opportunity that we have to share of the word of God may not return. May not return. That person may depart this life before we have that opportunity. What do we do? We do like the prodigal son. We say, oh, if I'd have just done this or if I'd have done that. I wish I'd have went when I had the opportunity. I wish I'd have said what I needed to say when I had a chance to say it. The son recognized where I'm at. Down here in the pits. Down here as low as you can get. What did he do? He started thinking, you know, my father, oh, he has, I, I, I'm down here eating with the hogs, and my father has plenty, enough bread to, uh, to spare. What did he have to do first of all? He had to come to himself. He had to recognize where he was, recognize where he ought to be of where he was and he did he said here's what I'm going to do I'm going to arise and I'm going to go back to the father and when I get there I'm going to tell the father father I'm not worthy to even be called your son for the things I've done the life that I've lived have wasted what you gave to me I'm not worthy to be called your son so if it'd be pleasing, I'd like to just be one of your hard servants. Just do whatever you bid me do, as long as I have some clothes to wear and some food to eat. The song said, I am so blessed. I've got clothes, I've got shoes, I've got a roof. Why should I not be thankful? Why should I not be happy of what God has blessed me with? Rather than, I, I tell people, why do you look for something else when you've got all you need? Why do you desire something else when you have a Father that gives you everything you desire? reason we don't receive it is because we don't ask for it. We don't ask. The son had to humble himself. He thought, he thought, I'm really going to have to plead with the father, my father, to even be a hard servant. But you know the best part of all this? The best part of all this is that the father I pictured in my mind. Now I had a mother. When I left the house and I went out, was never asleep when I returned. No matter when it was, she knew when I entered the door. Because she waited on me. 
to get home. They expected me to be there when I told her I would. But I pictured this father. Now this son, I don't know how long he was gone. Probably quite a while. He wasted everything he had with the time he was gone. Went over and hired himself out to a servant to feed the swine. So I don't know how long he was gone, but I pictured that father. If you have a house that has a porch on it, I can picture him every day. Going out there and looking. See if he saw him return. Just to see if I could see him coming. Why? Because he still had that love. Still had that love. Never went away. Why? Because he's his son. It never vanished. It was always there. When he walked out and he saw him, he had a great ways off. didn't stand and wait for him to get there. He went to meet him. Now I'm sure of this, that he forgave him before he ever got to him. Why? Because the scripture said he ran unto him, fell upon him, and hugged him kissed him, loved him, went back to the house and said, I want you to uh, uh, kill the fatty calf. I want you to get the best clothes that's in the house. I want you to get a ring, put it on his finger, because my son, my son has returned. He's come home. He was lost, but now he's found. Are you lost this morning? Do you want to find Christ? Do you want to have him in your life? Do you want to have joy? Do you want to have peace? Do you want to have happiness? Do you want to have comfort? It's the only place you'll find it. It's the only place you'll find it. My family gave me comfort. My family gave me joy and happiness. But they didn't give me what God did. They couldn't give me what God did. God gave me eternal life. Something that they could not give. They give us the best that they can give. I'm sorry to say that it's not good enough because it's not all that we need because we all need Jesus Hunter if you want to come get a song the joy the joy you know the song says we've got joy that's unspeakable can't tell somebody about joy. You can't really explain grace to somebody, can you? It's hard to really explain grace and joy. But you know how it feels within yourself, but you it's hard to tell somebody else how it feels. They gotta know it for themselves. They got to feel it for themselves. Sharing God and His Word is the most important thing we can do. I can help people, and I can give to people, I can buy for people, I can. Pray for people. 
but they've got to come to the knowledge that they need Jesus Christ in their lives. You've got to come to that knowledge that I'm lost and undone without God. And I have no hope. I have no hope. Hold on a second. Amen. When the Lord entered into your life, he washed you and he cleansed you. And, and I've, I've wondered just how big that spot is. Just how big that spot is that he washed and he cleansed and made whiter than snow. Ever how big it is? It's in the Father's hand. In the Father's hand. And he said, No man is able to pluck it out. I'm glad nobody can get mad at me and reach up there and grab it, take it away. I'm glad Satan can't get there to get it because he'd certainly have all of us. He'd have all of us. He works harder than anybody I know. Anybody I know, but he works to try to destroy. And he's not by himself. He's not by himself. The scripture says he has a lot of angels working for him. He has a lot of people working for him. If you think about all the lost and the few that are saved, Say, really? Scripture says hell enlarges itself every day. Straight is the way and narrow is the gate that leadeth to glory. And few there be that find it. Think about that. Few that find it. The disciples asked Jesus, said, This is so hard. How can anybody be saved? How can, how can anybody be saved? All you have to do is receive. You've got to receive the Word of God. Thank you this morning for your prayers. Thank you for listening again and hearing what I feel that God had to say to us or what he had to say to me anyway. So I thank you. I want to ask you to pray for Corey and his family. I, I know that you probably 
wanted him here this morning. I know you did. Preaching to you. But I've also been through what he's going through. And I know how hard it is to come and to prepare and to settle your mind and uh, preach what a message to the church. I know how hard that is. I've been there. But pray that God will give the whole family comfort. We all need each other's prayers. All of us. All of us need each other's prayer. Pray for us. We always stand in need of your prayers. Uh, pray that God would uh, direct and guide. And I pray that God blesses each and every one that is here. Linda and I was looking at the board at the people that was celebrating wedding anniversaries. You didn't see ours up there, but we will be celebrating one Tuesday. 55 years. This girl asked her and I the other day, he said, What's your secret? How, how do you make this last this long? And I said, love. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Love and obedience. <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you guys? Get along fine if you're obedient. <laughs> It'll just keep lasting. But it is, really. I, I, I told this lady at church once, her and her husband had divorced after a long marriage, and, and, and I guess I was a little bit cruel, probably after I look back and think. But I asked her, I said, I want to ask you a question. I said, how are you married so long to one another and suddenly you fall out of love? Her answer to me was, I didn't fall out. He drove me out. So, you know, we, and I thought about, I shouldn't have asked that. You know, but I still wonder. Love, love, love. What's Jesus? What's Christ? What's God? Love. Anyone want a word, anything on your heart? I want to give thanks to God for my salvation above all things and for how he has blessed me. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord. We need to thank him more for our blessings. Did you know that? We need to thank him more. Thanksgiving will be Thursday. A day that we celebrate. But there ought to be Thanksgiving every day. Every day. Anyone else? Anything? Thank you for your sermon today. Thank you for your sermon. Thanks for this. Someone else? I want to thank my, my, uh, my dad's had another um, clear PSA reading come back, so we're extremely happy about that. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Certainly always a blessing. And, and I noticed this morning of so many people that were mentioned so many times that we don't mention people, we don't think about people. But the scripture tells us to bring the sick, bring the sick and anoint them with their prayers. What's he saying? He's not saying this physically bring them, but to come and anoint them with their prayers. Pray for them. Ask God. 
that's God's will to be done. That's what I try to do. I, I don't try to plead with God to save someone from death because I might be praying the wrong thing. But God's will be done. Someone else? I'd like to say thanks to the Lord for all the prayers that he's actually given me for helping me and guiding me the right way and the wrong way. So. Bless your heart. Anyone else? The young men will come this morning. We'll take the offering. If they see any up there, I guess it's you and Mark. Then. <laughs> they need to practice every once in a while. You know what I said the other day about practice, don't you? We all need prayers and we all need practice. Mark, you want to ask the blessing for an offering, please. Lord, we're thankful to be here today. Lord, we're thankful for the message from Brother Ray. We ask you to bless him. We ask you to bless this church, Lord, and the family. Yes. Help us reach the lost. Lord, bless this offering that we've used for your kingdom. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.